Meg Records, the Meg Record Keeping Institute, Enigmatic Entity, Hypothetical Creator, Log Snippet 10, Begin Log, Date, 20-10-20, Location, Level 1, Base Alpha, Cat Zimmel's Office, Participants, Cat Zimmel's, Rank, Overseer B, Tilly Waite, Rank, Intern, Cat's desk was neat and organized, something only possible with their distinctly lessened workload in light of recent internal changes. Their trays of paper were sparse as a result of said changes, save for a little origami quadruped that she'd made from some unimportant file. She yawned loudly, leaning back whilst glancing up at the camera in the corner of the room, giving it a brief glance as she got comfortable. All was quiet for a while, but she suddenly snapped forwards when the door was knocked on. She leaned forwards and put her chair back on its legs, accompanying that with dotting some stationery around her desk to look as though she was at least a little busy. Cat Zimmels, uh, come in. Following their comment, the door slowly opened, with the, at the time, newly no-clipped individual Tilly Waite scooting inside Cat's office. She had a clipboard and a tablet in both her hands, walking up to the overseer's desk with a general and constant anxious demeanor. Upon reaching Kat's desk, she reached both her hands towards them, handling the two things she had. Kat looked at them confusedly, opting to discreetly swipe the original animal off her desk now that Tilly was closer. Tilly, wait. I have a thing for you. I was told to come over to you to pass this through an overseer. Cat Zimmels. Well, let's see it. Cat took both the clipboard and the tablet, setting the former aside to scroll the tablet screen with somewhat of a bored face, one which quickly became confused. Cat Zimmels. I don't deal with this database stuff. You sure this isn't for Justin or Andrew? Tilly wait. Well, they're not available right now. They're kind of busy. Cat Zimmels. Doing what? Don't tell me Andrew's back to his whole the greater good shtick. I don't want his MILF giving him another beating for another incident. Note, see level 174. Tilly wait. His what? And what did he do? Cat Zimmels. Don't worry about it. Look, just can't you pass this to an underseer? Tilly wait. I don't, uh, know any? Cat Zimmels. What, are you new? Tilly wait. Yeah, kinda. Cat Zimmels. Huh. Well, fair enough. You can leave, by the way. Tilly wait. Do I not need those back? Cat Zimmels. Oh, uh, no, it's fine. Just tell whoever you're working with that I'll hand it back. I assume you're actually living inside Alpha? Tilly wait. Obviously, I don't dare travel. Cat Zimmels. Wow, you really are new. Cat rolled her eyes, waiting until Tilly turned around to lean back in her chair. She began to scroll the page handed to her on the tablet her face immediately morphing and drooping into one of immense boredom. From what can be determined, Kat did not even reach beyond the first paragraph of what she was given, and simply dropped the tablet onto the desk. Tilly jolted a bit in surprise, suddenly turning around. Kat Zimmels. Are you fucking with me, lady? Tilly, wait. Am I what? I don't think so. Kat Zimmels. Then why did you give me this? What did you want me to even do with it? Give it the trick to be uploaded? Tilly, wait. Honestly, I don't even know. I think it's just because it's an enigmatic entity. They want to push it through one of you guys. Cat Zimmels. Yeah, that's how it used to work. Our standards have plummeted since then, let me tell you. Tilly waits. Okay, what do you want me to do then? Cat Zimmels. Pfft, well, well, you can stay right there, actually. The other two will put everything with a pulse on our god list. Tilly wait. I think it's actually called the Enigmatic Entities category? Cat Zimmels. Whatever. They're synonyms. Andrew and Justin will just toss any old thing on that list. I won't be doing that. Let's hold this little bastard up to some scrutiny, shall we? Tilly wait. Okay. Outstretching her arm and shoulder, Cat just about reached the tablet again, while still leaning back into her chair. Tilly waited for Cat to speak while she silently read both the tablet and the clipboard glancing to the door anxiously a good handful of times. After reading a little bit of it, Kat rested the tablet down on her lap, glancing back up to an intimidated Tilly. 
Cat Zimmels. So this guy, the puzzle maker, are they a god? Tilly wait. I think so? Like technically they are. They're an avatar. Cat Zimmels. Ugh, another one? Tilly wait. Wait, are there a lot of them? Cat Zimmels. You seem knowledgeable on what the so-called avatars are. Do I have to answer that? Tilly wait. I read up on a few of them. Some people suggested a note. See Entity 99. Few. Note. See Entity 140. Prominent. Note. See the enigmatic entity, the Red Knight. Ones. Note. See the enigmatic entity, the Keymaster. But I don't know how many there are. Cat Zimmels. Ha! <laughs> Too many! Note. See the list of enigmatic entities. Let me tell you. Now, what pillar? Footnote. Whilst pillars were hypothetical beings shrouded in mystery, not even mentioned in any of the backborn religions in the era of the lost, a recently found page, note, see the enigmatic entity the pillars slash the pillar scripture, on the GPD has brought into light their possible existence after the page was easily hacked into. The overseers have deemed the evidence of their actual existence too unsubstantial to research. End footnote. And concept do they represent? Tilly wait. Humor, I think? After Kat spoke, she picked up the paper clipboard to read through, choosing that over the puzzle maker's heavily edited page on the public database in order to get a more concise idea on their known origins and power. She didn't reply to Tilly immediately, seemingly distrusting of it until she set down the clipboard and brought her chair forwards too. Kat Zimmels. Well, shit, you were right. I thought the Game Master was the thing of humor. Tilly wait. I I guess the Puzzle Maker also is? Cat Zimmels. Are they related? Was the Puzzle Master also human once, and is that King person involved somehow? Tilly wait. I don't think so. They're just both avatars of humor, madam. They probably come from the same source, but other than that, they're unrelated. Cat Zimmels. God damn it. Pillar this, avatar that, not to mention other unrelated deities. Note, see Gods of Griots. All of these proprietary systems are a little weird and contrived, don't you think? Tilly wait. Well, I don't know. I've not even been in the back rooms for more than a few weeks. I'm just taking things as they are. Cat Zimmels. Well, I kind of think it is. We used to call powerful entities by just numbers, weirdly enough. That king one I mentioned. That thing on level 532. Note. See Entity 987. Fairy. That new space lady. Note. See Entity 700. Those heralds, I suppose. Note. See Entity 51. We just gave them normal numbers. We knew they were special, but we just gave them a number, same as anyone else. Tilly wait. Okay. Cat Zimmels. Then we found Blanche, and she kind of tripped things over a bit. We numbered her normally, but a few revelations about her made us think she was different. A little bit above the others, I guess. We made a new category for her, just whilst we tried to figure out what exactly she was. Tilly wait. Why are you telling me this? Cat Zimmels. It only got worse from there. We funneled a bunch of new powerful entities into that new category. We only knew a few. We figured the ones we found were all that were out there, so we thought we had it right. Keymaster, the Pillar Scribe, the Red Knight, Vilya, even the Conductor System. The Conductors barely even qualify, and we put them in. Tilly wait. Can I leave? Cat Zimmels. I have to admit, it's at least partially my fault. Ashers. Note, see the person of interest, A River, passing, and with what Z became, I guess it felt wrong to give here Echo. Note, see the enigmatic entity, Nostalgi Gaius, some random number. For some reason, no one else did either, not even Andrew. Tilly wait. Madam, respectfully, what are you even going on about right now? Cat glanced up to Tilly, looking confusedly at Tilly with a surprisingly anxious and upset expression. Silently, after a few moments, she took both the tablet and the clipboard, holding both of them out to Tilly for them to take. Cat Zimmels. Nothing important, newbie. Just take these back. Give your managers a message, too. Tilly looked down to both items, reaching forwards to take them with a little bit of hesitancy. 
She glanced up to Kat upon taking them, holding both the items close to her chest. Tilly wait. What message do I pass on? Cat Zimmels. Tell them to just post the page first, preferably under a normal number first, but don't fight it if Puzzle Maker swaps it back. However, I want you to get your higher-ups to actually make some tighter guidelines for powerful entities. Tilly wait. Okay, tighter guidelines. How? They're still powerful, aren't they? Cat Zimmels. Frighteningly so in some cases, yeah, but clearly they're not as enigmatic as we thought, given that there's so many of the fucking things. Just try to get someone, anyone really, to establish what a god should be. We've seen dozens of things we've believed to be gods. At this point, I'm no longer convinced they're anything more than just quite powerful entities. Tilly wait. Is... is that all? Cat Zimmels. Mm, just don't forget to do that, okay? Maybe draft up a page alongside those new guidelines so people can understand them a little bit better. Tilly wait. Right. I'll be going in that case. Uh, bye. Awkwardly beginning to walk back, even when she was speaking, Tilly was quick to exit Kat's office, escaping out of sight back to her place of work. Kat sighed once they were gone, beginning to clean up her empty desk. As she did, she glanced at a framed photo of both herself and the late Asher River. She breathed in, reaching and picking it up whilst the fingers on her other hand tapped rhythmically. She pressed her thumb onto the glass, momentarily feeling a brief static and buzz on the tip of it, but she put it down after another moment to resume tidying up. Many months later, the back rooms. You've been here before. Enigmatic Entity, Hypothetical Creator, Entity Number, Non-Applicable, Internally Referred to as PAE0, Footnote, Pending Approval Entity 0, Image Caption, The Observable Universe of Most of the Front Rooms, Presented Alongside the Observable Multiverse of the Known Back Rooms, Description, the hypothetical creator is not a name for an entity that exists, but is instead the overarching term for one or multiple living or inanimate objects that exist above all others, even above entities or levels that claim to have a hand in the founding of reality, such as Icarus Procedens or the World Factory. Due to the nature of what an entity like this would be, every aspect about it is exclusively hypothetical and speculatory. Its actual physical appearance and behaviors cannot be mapped, only how it would hypothetically act when viewed through the limited lens of a short lifespan mortal such as us humans, or other similar sentient creatures that live, or lived, amongst us. A creature such as this would be more powerful than everything below it most likely made in a plane of existence above our third dimension, or perhaps above any non-Euclidean dimension, as even inanimate objects that are built in higher dimensions would have complete, unadulterated access to our dimension. Footnote, in the same way that us three-dimensionals have a complete view over flat planes. End footnote. The hypothetical creator could theoretically be anything following this logic. It is even possible that the creator exists outside of any dimension entirely, in a state void of any height, width, or depth to speak of. Appearance Image Caption Quarks, the smallest known elemental particles in all of creation. The look of this or these potential being or beings are not one that can be accurately described in depth, and even basic hypothesis proves incredibly difficult to do. Although the hypothetical creator would be similar to little understood beings such as Agath and other pillars wherein they have a body which is quote unquote forbidden, note, see Phenomenon 43, footnote, even if the rules on who can witness what are patchy, and footnote, to witness, the hypothetical creator's body would most likely not follow the exact same rules. Assuming such a being is even corporeal to begin with, it can be assumed that their assortment of matter is not one familiar to any witness in either the front rooms or the back rooms. A creator above all other creations could be above all else for a number of different reasons, including its material makeup. It may be formed out of alien molecules, atoms, or perhaps even fundamentally different elementary particles. 
As such, the hypothetical creator may not be able to be witnessed purely because its form is not built for us, instead of any external factors and information blockages. Such a form may not emit heat, radiation, or have any way of determining its age, and could have a completely different atomic mass to anything currently known, if their body were to have an atomic mass to begin with. Whilst the hypothetical creator would most likely exist in a higher dimension, something very few godlike seem to be, some particles of its body could still be visible to the naked eye, assuming the point addressed prior is incorrect. It could, therefore, have internal and external organs built in shapes and patterns alien to the conventions of any species. Their atomic and subatomic construction could also be completely alien, perhaps not one made of even the basic elementary particles that are the building blocks of known creation, with even the possibility that they have no subatomic construction at all as nothing not made of elementary particles exists in the Meg's inventories, or is even mentioned anywhere in the general public database, it is unknown what the reaction would be to such a substance. However, as human beings inherently use things like mass, weight, and heat to gauge and analyze the world around themselves, it is believed that the lack of those feelings would be what causes an instinctual and universal unnerve. The hypothetical creator may also possess a size otherwise bewildering to the standard connotations of what a god would entail. It may be something infinitely small, or at such a scale where the entire backroom's multiverse is that of a simple atom to them. Despite being a potentially uncontested one above all else, that is not to say that the known creation was built necessarily to facilitate their needs. Behaviors Image Caption The Eyes of Argos, a group led by an entity which has ideals and morals only its most devout members understand. As with other elements of this page, the fact that the hypothetical creator is a theoretical construct limits any exact judgment on how it would act. Its methods of acting would vastly change depending on why it made all of creation, and why it made it the way it did. Whilst an entity of this nature may at least recognize the basic parallels of good and bad or right and wrong, as is the case with beings of all levels of abilities, the nuances of those opinions would be incredibly complex, most likely not ones that could be understood. Much like groups in the backrooms that are entity-led or are of an entity majority, such as the Eyes of Argos or the Backrooms Remodeling Co., their differently wired brain, should they even have such a thing, coupled with their generally higher level of existence, means that justifying any of their actions under our knowledge of reason would be an infallible task due to their immense difference from us. It is also possible that this hypothetical being does not even have a perspective on binary ideas we consider to be simple and universal, and may have completely different binary ideas, if any, that we cannot even fathom. With our understanding of time and quantum physics, it can at least be assumed that this being experiences both of those differently to us in order to have made creation. Assuming this god, for lack of a better term, has made reality in their image, much like humans do in their own work, it can be assumed that all of the laws we abide by are mere simplified versions of what they experience regularly. In a similar sense that all computer simulations we create are simplified versions of our reality with excessive limitations, it can be assumed that what potentially created us has done something similar. As such, experiencing whatever it does, or even what it is made of, may simply be impossible, as what they do, look like, and are comprised of, are simply not meant for our eyes. Discovery Image Caption a simplified diagram of the creation and subsequent expansion of the universe, a process no currently catalogued living thing has seen in its entirety. The hypothetical creator, due to its nature, cannot be discovered. Whilst countless hypotheses on its existence have been made, which, theoretically, would discount even being able to witness it, there is a greater factor which ultimately forbids any human-like mortal from finding it. 
despite our perception of time misconstruing how long human history feels to span back, in reality it is known that humanity is, and most likely will be, a mere blip in the grander history of the universe. Even taking into account earlier species of humans, the entire human race has not even been present on Earth for a billion years. When taking into consideration that the universe has existed for 13.8 billion years and will continue to exist for another 100 trillion, humans will not have even existed for a single percentage of that time. This contrasts differently to many godlikes currently catalogued both on the Mega Database and the GPD itself, as many of those usually enigmatic entities are extremely tied to humans and human ideologies, such as the idea of living concepts, note, see Phenomenon 10, or gods which are weakened by our technological progression, note, see the enigmatic entity Gods of Griots. For anything, inanimate or otherwise, to be able to exist for hundreds of trillions of years intact, its speed in relative to us would most likely be incredibly slow, much like how other immortals may perceive time differently. A being which predates creation would most likely experience time at a faster rate to actually make the details of the multiverse that, to us, would take millions of years. Assuming that this is how the hypothetical creator operates, then no mortal lifespan would be able to see even a single action it performs, nevertheless comprehend a single action in a vacuum, and no immortal to date has existed for long enough to witness such a thing either. Ignoring all other speculatory ideas about the hypothetical creator's composition and thoughts, its perception of time is the great equalizer in why it could never be witnessed. On top of this, because of their long lifespan in comparison to the short one of the human race, this hypothetical being may not be aware of our existence, or at the very least remember it once it is over. The same would be true for any species that has existed or currently does exist, even with immortal beings, and as such it is incredibly unlikely that anything it does would be for us exclusively. Its Existence Image Caption An interpretation of what the oldest forms of light look like, light which originates from the very edge of the known universe. The existence of the hypothetical creator has been cultivated for an extremely specific purpose, existing as a theoretical thought experiment about what comes above what are currently regarded as the gods of reality. Footnote. They are mostly regarded as the gods specifically of the backrooms, as it is unknown how these usually self-titled deities would interact in a multiverse not of their own with the front rooms. End footnote. In both the early days of the general public database, and especially the MEG database, finding powerful entities was regarded as a commodity. Thus, the trend of solely cataloging them under a new, unique name rather than an organizational number was utilized to highlight the power of such individuals. However, over time, more of these individuals were discovered, especially when the long-dead backborn mythologies of the Pantheon and the Gods of Griots were unearthed. While some known entities are incredibly powerful, some even being able to change reality around them with thought, the number of individuals able to do this has brought forth a level of re-evaluation within the Meg. The power that some of the enigmatic entities catalogued contain is not to be understood, as to humans their will over reality appears godlike. However, even with their power, the question of raising the ceiling has persisted to return the unique listing back to what it was designed for. This questioning gradually led to the idea of the hypothetical creator, a being which cannot be catalogued because of what it connotes an idea trapped in perpetual limbo. It cannot necessarily be confirmed nor denied, hence why it eternally exists in a pending approval state, but the possibility of its existence is too important not to catalog. Closing Notes 
As briefly touched upon with mentions of higher dimensions, it is distinctly possible that there are beings above the hypothetical creator itself. Assuming this to be true, the title, Hypothetical Creator, can instead be treated as a title passed on to the next higher up in the chain of life. It has always been fascinating to discuss what comes above humans. Note, see Phenomenon 10. What would come above them? Note, see the enigmatic entity, the gods of Griots, and what would come above even them? Note, see the enigmatic entity, the pillars, slash the pillar scripture. This incarnation of what would be dubbed the hypothetical creator is the next step up in that line of thinking, and it is even possible that something created the creator itself. Although such a concept could not be described rationally when its creation is not even understood, perhaps future advancements will raise the ceiling one more generation above, allowing discussion on the next hypothetical creator.